Hello, if anyone's joined us so far, we're just going to wait um, just a minute to make sure that everyone's had a chance to sign on. Hope that you're all well. Um, Okay, if anyone's just joined us, um, this session will start shortly. We're just waiting um, to make sure everyone's had an opportunity to, to sign on. If you just bear with us for a, for a few, few more seconds and then we'll start. Okay. So um, before we start, I would just like to um, let you all know that this session is being recorded. Um, if you could please make sure that your camera's off and your microphone is muted, please. Um, there will be a Q&A session at the end of this presentation and you can ask questions using the Q&A um, button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Um, if you will think of questions as we go along um, and jot them down and then you can um, ask away at the end of the session. So welcome to our live Q&A with um, the admissions team. Um, present today is myself, I'm Rebecca Tidman, and also my colleague Sue Murphy. Hello, nice to see you all. Uh, we're also joined today by three of our students, Hannah Dre from SET42, Nancy Tier from SET43, and Elizabeth odriscoll Silcox from SET44. I'll let each of them introduce themselves. Hannah, if you'd like to start. Um, hi, I'm Hannah. Um, I'm in my final year of studying at Norland and I'm head of students. Um, I'm 22 and yeah, have had um, the most amazing three years at Norland. Hello, uh, I'm Nancy, as it says. I'm deputy head of SET 43. I'm in my second year and yeah, I mean, I've only done a year, but I'm loving it and can't wait to carry on. I'm Elizabeth. I'm in my first year at Norland. I'm having a really good start. Brilliant, thank you. Okay, so we'll do a brief overview of admissions. Um, as most of you are aware, all of our applications must be made um, via UCAS um, online. Uh, we can't accept any applications directly, I'm afraid. Um, Sue and I manage all of the applications um, and take you through your journey um, right through until enrolment. Um, once you've made your application on UCAS, you can follow it through track. Um, on track, you'll be able to see when you've been invited for an interview, uh, where after your interview, if you've been made an offer, and if that offers a conditional offer, whether that's um, whether you then have been accepted. Well, you will also be contacted by us directly, um, but you can um, follow all of that through your track as well. We're going to do a brief overview on accommodation. Um, so Norlin doesn't have a halls of residence. Um, however, we will find accommodation for our first year students um, if you require it. In your offer pack, you'll receive a, um, an application to say whether you want to um, secure accommodation with us. It's not compulsory, but most people who do require accommodation in Bath do take us up in the offer. You'll be housed only with other Norlin students, so we wouldn't put you in houses with um, students from other universities or anything like that, and you'll be with other first year students as well. Um, the houses range from five to ten bed properties. Um, on the form as well, you'll be able to make requests. Um, there's an option to say what type of house you'd like, whether you would rather a quiet house or a lively house. And if there's other um, concerns or requests that you'd like to make, you can add those in as well. We can't guarantee that everyone's requests will be made, but we will definitely take them into consideration for you. Um, the cost of the accommodation is roughly about 500 to 500 pounds per month. Um, Bath, unfortunately, isn't the cheapest place to live um, in England. However, we do try and find a balance between reasonably cost 
priced accommodation, but also nice accommodation as well. Um, I don't know if, um, Elizabeth, would you like, you're in your first year accommodation. I don't know if you'd like to say anything about your experiences. Yeah, so when I found out my accommodation, um, we'd get to tick when you um, apply, like whether you're willing to have your details shared with the people that you're housed with. Um, I did, and so did all of my flatmates. Um, so we'd like, we were able to communicate before we came, which was really good for us. We got to kind of get to know each other before we came, so we weren't moving in with complete strangers. Um, we'd set up some plans for us to do to get to know each other when we actually came here. But we had an idea of things that we had in common, things like that. So um, we also got to share all of our research on the uh, flat so that we could kind of see um, what other people had found um, where we were living. Um, my accommodation is amazing. It's really nice. Um, and yeah, just being with first years at Norland is really comfortable. Com yeah, speak. Um, comforting because they're going through exactly the same as me. They're all in my class as well. So they're all in my bubble. Um, and it's just really nice. Yeah. And we got to know each other before we came. So it's not like you're moving in with a complete stranger. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, I will note as well for your second and third year accommodation, you will um, you'll have to find your own accommodation. So we only secure um, for our first years. Um, we find by the end of the first year as well, you um, students have sort of formed friendships, uh, different friendship groups and things like that. Or, you know, you may have decided that you want to go and live on your own or you found something you can incorporate with work and things like that. So um, there's there's lots of options um, after the first year, but the, the accommodation that we secure is only for the first year for you. Um, right, so how do we help? Um, in the early stages, primarily, um, Sue and I will help with your inquiries um, about um, your qualification queries and things like that. Um, if you have anything at all, then we really, really would love you to just send us an email and ask if you're unsure about a qualification that you want to study or a qualification that you're currently studying. Um, if it meets our entry requirements, then just drop us a line and we will be more than happy to help. Uh, there'll be nothing worse than getting to the end of two years and finding out that um, the qualification that you've been studying doesn't meet the entry requirements and that is the absolute last thing that we want to happen um, so please please just drop us a line and we are always there and always happy to help um, we send you information about your interview as i said you'll be able to see um, on your track on ucas whether you've been invited to an interview but we also send you an email directly just detailing um, what will be involved in that interview um, and things like that. This year, our interviews are being held via Zoom. Um, what with the current situation, we figured this was the safest way for everyone. Um, and so far, they've been working really well. So um, hopefully, that will continue with that. As for next year, I don't know what the what. <laughs> what the, what will be happening so whether we'll be going back to face-to-face -face interviews or zoom interviews i don't know let's hope we can get back to face-to-face -to -face, but um we'll just have to see um we like to keep the interviews really friendly relaxed um you know we want to get the best out of you so um you know try not to worry um i'd say it's best to try and um prepare you know do like a um, a mock-up interview or things like that um, because we although we have the applications from you we really want to see um, as much as you as possible um, it's you know you can read something about somebody on paper but when you come to interview that's really your time to shine um, and for us to get to know you um, I don't know Nancy would you like to say anything about your experiences with the interviews yeah I just wanted to kind of second what you said Rebecca and that 
everyone will be nervous and everyone will be feeling the same but the thing is nerves and it shows that you ca you can it shows that you you really do want to study at Norland and that you're passionate but like Rebecca said all they really want to see is they want to see that you're passionate about working with children and they want to hear about your experiences and they really just want to hear all about you and that's the those are the blessings of an interview you can kind of just you know brag about yourself but in a lovely way and you can talk about all the things you've done and that's what they want to hear they just want to hear that you're passionate about working with children and studying at Norland but um, if you think you're the only one who's nervous you're almost definitely wrong because everyone will be feeling the same. Can I yeah. quickly add in as well that um, just like you said Nancy that like I think in your interview you maybe get 15 or 20 minutes to kind of to give yourself and to sell yourself and um, so it's really important not to be nervous and not to be worried so that you can really showcase your true who you are and um, hopefully the nerves won't get in the way and you can really give off why you want to come to Norland. Yeah, that's definitely, we want, we want to get the best of you. Um, you know, as I said, <clears throat> we can read about you on paper, but actually meeting somebody, um, you know, even across um, social, um, you know, a screen like this through Zoom or something, um, it still gives you the ability to get your, your real passion across to us. And, that, and that's what we really want to see. The um, applications for 2021 are already open. So if you want to apply for next September, get your applications in quickly. Um, and if you want to, you can also apply for deferred places as well. So um, if you wanted to apply for 2022 as a deferred place, you can do that um, as well. Uh, but bear in mind, you would have to be um, completing your, your level three qualification this summer to apply for a deferred place. Um, so after the interviews, um, Sue and I also deal with all the offers. Um, we will be sending, assuming you're successful, um, we'll be sending your offer packs, which include your, um, your offer letter, uh, contracts, um, your accommodation form and your bursary application. Um, so that will all come after you've been offered a place. Um, I know we have a lot of queries about bursary applications. Everyone's entitled to apply for a bursary, um, but you'll only get that paperwork through once you've been offered a place. Um, we'll send information about your uniform, um, your medical forms to ensure your fitness to practice. And we also deal with your DBS applications. So if you're on the update service, um, and that's kept up to date, then you won't need um, a new application, a new DBS application. However, if you're not on the D or not on the update service, even if you've had a DBS application within the last, you know, couple of years or so, you will still be required to complete another application. Okay, so applying to Norland, um, the entry requirements to um, gain entry into Norland is 96 UCAS points. You can achieve these by a variety of different qualifications. Um, a common route would be A-levels. Just to let you know, we accept all subjects at A-levels. Um, three Cs at A-level would amount to 96 UCAS points. You could also do a B, a C and a D. That would amount to 96 UCAS points as well. We have a lot of queries about which subjects people should study, but we do accept all subjects. Um, other common courses that people study are cash and BTEC, but it doesn't mean that they are the only courses that you can do. We accept all level three qualifications. You just need to make sure that you've got the 96 UCAS points that you need. Um, you know, we completely appreciate sometimes when people start college, they might have an idea of what they want to do and then their pathway may change halfway through. So even if you're studying something that you think doesn't relate to what you would be studying at Norland, our main concern would be making sure that you've been studying at the right level um, and we'll teach you everything that we want you to know when you come here, basically. So, you know, don't worry too much if you don't think what you've been studying is right. As long as you've got the entry requirements um, needed, we will um, interview you and then you can tell us exactly why you've made this decision then. Um, you've also got your GCSEs um, 
requirements. So you'll need five GCSEs at grade four or above. Um, in the old system, that would be a grade C. This must include English language and maths. We also accept equivalent um, GCSEs. If you go onto our website, onto the entry requirements, you'll be able to see that um, there's a link where you'll be able to find all the equivalents. For example, we accept functional skills, maths and functional skills, English. So if you're unsure, have a look on our website. And if it's still unclear, then drop us an email and uh, we can check for you. OK. Um, as I mentioned earlier, all of our applications have to come through UCAS. Um, you'll see on the screen there is our institution code and our course code. So you can search for those. You could also search Norland. Um, you can search the, the title of the degree. Um, and I'm sure that that will come up on there and you'll be able to start your, um, your application to us. Um, in your personal statement, um, if you have applied to a variety of different um, universities, you might not be able to say exactly what it is you want to say to us. So in that case, we do accept um, additional personal statements that you're welcome to send to us. If you send them through to the admissions email address, again, this is on the screen for you. If you could send it around about the same time that you submit your application, that would be great because then we can marry the two together a lot easier. Um, and yeah, there's, there's, there's no criteria, just anything additional that you, that you want to say to us really. Um, so once you've submitted your application, um, added any additional um, documents that you need, then you can, um, will invite you to interview, assuming that you meet the entry requirements. And as I said, this firstly comes through UCAS um, and then you'll receive an email from us directly. If we give you a date and a time and it's not suitable, don't be afraid to let us know. Um, you know, we can be quite flexible um, as well and, and we'll try and help where possible. We do have set interview days, so it would have to be on one of our interview days. Um, however, you know, don't be afraid to contact us if there is a problem. Um, so then after your interview, we then would go on and make um, offers, you'll either receive a conditional offer or an unconditional offer, depending on whether you're, you have your um, qualifications already or not. Um, if you're given a conditional offer, that will come through around the middle of August. Um, I'm not sure this year, I think it might change slightly. I know they were talking about it because of the A-levels are being sat a bit later, but um, it's, it's around the middle, the middle to the end of August that you'll you'll receive those. Um, one thing to note, um, for equal consideration, we need to have all of our um, applications through by the 15th of January. Um, taking this into consideration, we wouldn't be able to interview everyone before the 15th of January um, or, or fill the course. So when you do come for an interview, um, we would We'll try and let you know as soon as possible, but we can't fill the course completely until we've had a chance to interview everybody. So if you don't hear from us straight away, please don't worry and don't assume that that means that you haven't been successful um, and, and wait to hear from us and, and we'll do our best to get, get back to you as soon as possible. Um, Elizabeth, would you like to speak about your experiences with you, um, with you Cass? Yeah, so... When I applied, I applied for deferred entry. Um, to do that, there's um, a different kind of code. You like it shows you like entry for twenty twenty one or entry for twenty twenty two, and you just put the code in. Um, but obviously, I had my interview with those who applied to start Norland last year. Um, but you get your offer based on the year that you say that you want to attend. You, you can defer after that, I believe, um, but obviously that's down to Norland. So, you know, you can ask, but um, I would say if you know you want to defer, then there's a perfect, perfectly good way to do so. Um, you just look at the codes as to which year you want to apply. Mm -hmm. um, 
with UCAS, there's a lot of rumours um, when it comes to the offers and the times. I'd say don't listen to them. Just kind of read what UCAS say on their website as to when those offers will be released. Um, and they will be released to you then. So you get your offer come up on UCAS um, when you get your results. Obviously, you do find out whether you've got um, a place after the interview, but most of the time they end up being conditional. So it's only when you've actually got your results that you will um, receive that ultimate price come up on your UCAS. So you'd see that on track. Um, but your colleges will show you how to use UCAS. Just remember when it comes to personal statements, you know, if you're applying to other universities as well, it doesn't matter. Just send um, something separate. You don't even have to, but you can send something separate to Nolan to let them know that it is really what you want. But if you're not applying anywhere else, you can make your personal statement aimed at Nolan. That's what I did because I didn't apply anywhere else. Um, and that's perfectly OK as well, you know, just take take your advice take take your own advice take other people's advice but just try and show that passion that you have even from the very start where you're kind of applying um yeah just don't worry okay. um right so that's the that's comes to the end of the presentation. Um, just to let you know that we have um, a few more presentations coming up. After this one at two o'clock, we've got a live Q and A with fees, student finance, and bursaries. So all the fun stuff. <laughs> um, on Thursday, there's the live Q and A with careers and employability, and then on Friday, um, there's the live Q and A with speak to our students. You'll need to sign up to these, but you can find all the information on our website. So if you're interested in either any of those, then, then go on our website and, um, and have a look. Right, um, we're now gonna to go to the live Q&A. Um, so if you would like to ask any questions, as I said, um, you can use the Q&A bot button at the bottom of your Zoom. Um, if you're unsure about whether your qualifications will meet the criteria, um, if you could just drop admissions an email, um, that would be better because the, the amount of qualifications that are available is quite, um, quite vast um, and it's a bit of a minefield. So short of me sitting here flicking through a massive um, <laughs> folder full of qualifications, it would be much easier if you just sent them through to us and then we can um, have a look through our uh, Bible of qualifications and then get back to you on those. Brilliant. Thank you very much, everyone. We've got some fantastic questions that have come through, so I will get going. Um, I'm going to start with the students. I'll start with you, Hannah. Um, obviously, Becca said that students can study um, a real range of subjects, and I just wondered if we could go around um, the three of you so you can say which subject you studied. Yeah, of course. Um, so before I came to Norland, I studied um, A-levels in French psychology and drama and theatre studies. Um, and as Rebecca said, these were um, perfectly fine to apply um, to Norland with. And yeah, I secured the grades and um, it was all good. Yeah, um, I also did A-levels and I also did theatre studies and psychology. Um, and I also did an EPQ, so an extended project on um, childhood schemas and childhood development, because obviously I did two A-levels, so I was making up with new case points um, that way. And it was just, I was obviously nervous about not doing um, three A-levels because uh, obviously they suggest doing three to make up the three Cs or equivalent to with the 96 points, but um, Norland was so amazing and, you know, suggested doing an extended project and I was able to make the points and got in, so. Um, I did A-levels as well. Um, I did English literature, government and politics and history and these subjects were, yeah, they were fine to apply. Um, but I might add, I know the three of us have done A-levels, so probably not the 
broadest of examples, but I have got roommates who did completely different subjects. You know, I've got one who did farming. I've got others who did childcare. You know, it, they're just the subjects that we've done, but don't worry that the three of us have done A-levels. And I think it's probably nice that, we, um, that we've all done something for, because my, all my housemates did um, BTECs or cashes, and actually they were so much better at all of the practical things than I was. And so they were super, super helpful when it came to that. And we all had, because we all came with different previous um, experiences and qualifications, it means that you can learn from each other and really help each other out. So that was actually really useful. Yeah, just something to add to all of that, which is that if you do entirely different subjects from childcare, then we do like to see that you've had some childcare experience in other forms, maybe babysitting or volunteering or looking after your siblings, something like that. That's very important to us as well. Brilliant. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, Becca, what is the smallest bedroom house that you offer for first years? The, um, so I think the smallest house is a five bed property. Um, well. Brilliant, thanks Becca. Um, Nancy, apart from food cost, how much would you say per calendar month um, you, you pay, including bills? Um, did you say including or excluding food costs? Sorry. Uh, without food, just um, bills. Uh, with bills, I think it can vary. It depends who you go through. I know that during lockdown I spent a good few hours on the phone to EDF trying to get our contract for the new year, but um, it depends. I think we split between the five of us and we pay about £20 a month for gas and electric. Uh, well, it's 18, so it's about 90. But I know my friends in a free house pay 96 per month and split it. So it will be cheaper if you're living with more people because you can spread the costs. But um, yeah, I mean, it does depend who you go through, but uh, probably about £20 a month each, more or less. Brilliant. Eliza, did you want to add something there? Yeah, um, we actually have split the bills, um, so we, all of our bills are included in that. Um, we, from there then, although uh, there's no liability to a single one of us for the bills, it's all of us. Um, and we pay the four of us, it's a little bit complicated at my house because we've got um, foreign student who doesn't have an English bank account so we're paying £80 um, but then we split that and it, it actually works out about £60, um, £60 each um, between the five of us um, but that's all of the bills included was split the bills um, excluding food so wi-fi and everything is unlimited so unlimited wi-fi unlimited water unlimited electric gas um, so we split the bills and that's how we worked it out and it worked out about £60 each. Brilliant, thank you both. Um, Sue, when would I receive the offer pack? Um, shortly after you've received your offer on UCAS really, it varies from session to session, but generally within a week or two, I would say. Great, thank you very much. Becca, what would you, oh, sorry, Becca. Sorry, just to quickly add to that, if you've applied for a deferred place, um, we probably wouldn't send the offer packs until the, the following year for the year that they have actually applied to as well, just to just to point that out. Great, thanks. Um, I'll stay with you, Becca, for this next one, uh, which is what would you recommend wearing for the interview? Um, we would want to see you in something... Um, something smart, something that you would think appropriate to wear to an interview. This year, even though the interviews have been conducted via Zoom, we would still um, we would still like to see that people are dressing appropriately as well. Nancy? Hi, uh, yeah, I just wanted to add, um, I think with clothes, obviously it's what you, you know, clothes, it's like Rebecca said, be smart, but also just small things that might make you noticeable, and although I'm now saying it to however many of you, but it's just things like keeping your hair out of your face, the way you'd expect to be working with children, you know, having your hair back. I mean, I know you're not expected to know how to do a Nolan bun straight away and turn up to your interview in the Nolan bun, but just having your hair out your face will show your professionalism and things like that, you know, jewellery, all of that kind of thing. I think as well along those lines, like with makeup and everything, like keeping it quite simple and minimal, um, reflecting how, how you're going to be expected to um, 
dress and um, show yourself once you are at Norland is just something important to bear in mind. Yeah. Great, thanks. I'll stay with you next, um, Hannah. Um, do you remember what types of questions you were asked during your interview and what advice would you give? Yeah, so um, having said not to be nervous, I do remember being incredibly nervous. So um, <laughs> yeah, but once, I remember walking up to Norland being incredibly nervous and then actually once you're in the building with the staff and you have your one-on-one -on -one interview, they just make you feel really at home and really comfortable. And um, I was asked a lot of questions about why, like why I wanted to be a Norland nanny, why I why I chose in Norland, um, kind of what how I like how I felt that my um, position at Norland would be, um, you know how how I could add to life at Norland, um, and what I see my career looking like, how I see myself in ten years, um, those sorts of questions. So. It's, it's basically just gauging why you want to come to Norland and just ensuring that you have that passion and um, that drive and that you really, really want this. Um, because yeah, it's an it's a amazing journey, but it's a big commitment. So it's just making sure that it's right for you as well. Okay, did you want to add something there? Um, yeah, I was just gonna say as well, um, following on as well from Sue's point about having um, experience, we find the more experience you have working with children, the more confident you feel talking about them as well. So when you do come for an interview and you're asked why, um, you know, why you want to be here, why you want to do things, um, you know, why you want to work with children and things like that, um, the more experience you've had, the more confident you're going to be um, about talking about that. And you'll be more in the knowledge of knowing why it is you want to do that. So um, it's definitely beneficial. Um, yeah. You know, more experience you can get first exactly and it it'll allow us to see your passion for childcare, which is really what we're looking for yeah great thanks um sue if i don't have uh all of the gcse grades that i need but i have the experience could i still apply well you will have to get your gcse grades to be considered you have to meet our entry requirements um so, but you know, there obviously might be opportunities for you to take them, presumably before you come. I don't know what stage you're at with your education, but yeah, we do need to see the five GCSEs at grade C or grade four. Um, and if, you know, you had everything else and you just missed the boat with one of your, say your maths GCSE, for example, there, that it is possible for you to still to come to Norland if we loved your interview and so on, but then you would have to take your maths GCSE and find a way to do that for yourself, really. We'd help and advise you, but you'd have to do that during your first year at Norland. Basically, it's an industry requirement, for example, to have maths and English GCSE. Um, but we wouldn't really advise that because you know there's quite a lot of workload during your first year. So it's best to try and get all your qualifications before you come. Great, thanks, Sue. Um, Becca, when would the interviews usually happen? So for 2021, interviews have already started. Um, so get your applications in, <laughs> if that's the year that you want to apply for. Um, they go from October right through to about March, um, March time. So um, like I said, we have the 15th of January um, deadline for equal consideration. So um, depending on how many come later on in the year, depends on how long they go, they can go on for really. But yeah, they, they've already started. So um, yeah, get your applications in. <laughs> Great, thanks Rebecca. Um, Elizabeth, when did you find out where you'll be living in your first year? Uh, I think we found out results day. Yeah. Yeah, um, we found out on results day. So once everybody's places have been confirmed, um, you kind of get that email then later on um, in the afternoon. But my set have had a group chat going for the last year um, and everybody was already on it. We kind of met at our interviews or we'd meet on student room and Instagram, things like that. And we'd add each other into this group. Um, a lot of people would find out about their accommodation earlier on in the day than I did. Um, and I know that that made me a little bit panicky, like, 
has my place accidentally been confirmed? <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, just don't panic about when you find out. People will find out before you because obviously the um, the team need time to be able to get everybody's information together, write those emails out, things like that. Um, you will find out. Um, I just found out a lot later than other people and there is kind of a break you know you you kind of saw the break when they were having their lunch things like that just don't be glued to your phone waiting for that email on results mm. day because it will come it will <laughs> <laughs> great thanks Elizabeth um I've got one here so if I have already been offered an interview do I still need to send off the separate personal statement to Norland you don't have to, but if you feel that the personal statement that you've written on your UCAS application is perhaps very general um, and, you know, not necessarily applicable to Norland in particular, then you're very welcome to send us one. Great, thanks, Sue. Um, I've got one here that I'll ask to Hannah and Nancy as they are um, quite far into their studies is, do students have jobs to support their finances and what sort of jobs do you have? Yeah, so um, quite a few of us have jobs um, and we have a big Facebook page that runs with all the three year groups in, um, which is regularly updated with um, jobs, babysitting jobs, nannying jobs. It's a bit quiet at the moment because of coronavirus, um, but in normal life, there's so many part time nannying, babysitting, um, doing the school runs, um, up before college and after college but also weekend jobs um personally i work a lot more in the holidays um because i prefer to use term time to focus on norland um but then in term times there's um such a huge amount of temporary nanny jobs again outside of coronavirus both in england and abroad um and i think it's a lot more common to find students that work than students that don't like all of my friends work alongside their studies um just to support support themselves but also to gain that experience as well um which is just really invaluable so, yeah yeah i agree seconding all of what hannah said and also i think because you know because norland is such a cl uh, close tight-knit community um you really can find jobs through the facebook page through your flatmates through your peers um, but also what a lovely thing is, is lots of my friends started jobs through a, through a Facebook advert or through a, you know, through just word of mouth. And they're still with their families a year in. And it's really lovely relationships you can make with um, jobs in Bath. I'm the same as Hannah. I have lots of, I'm in Sussex at the moment, half term. And I have lots of um, kind of regular families in Sussex. And I tend to focus more on my studies while I'm in term time but weekends sometimes a one-off babysitting um but yeah it is it's possible and lots maybe even most people do have learning jobs alongside their studies so i think it might also be worth adding that a lot of my um friends actually just, like quite enjoy taking a break from nannying in their part-time jobs and actually work very, very random ones. My best friend last year worked um, on the co-op checkout and just loved it. She made loads of friends and actually having something a bit different is um, also great fun. And I know some people work in cafes or bars or restaurants. Um, and actually, yeah, it's, you know, you know, you don't have to work with children. You do all your placements and you do all um, everything at Norland. So it might be that you kind of fancy a temporary job doing something a bit more different, which is obviously totally... Yeah fine too. Elizabeth, do you want to add something there? Yeah, I know I'm in, only in my first year, but you know, I think it makes it a good example. You know, I'm only in my first half term, but I've already got um, plenty of babysitting jobs coming through and that I've done, um, um, particularly through the Facebook group, but also word of mouth. So once you've done one kind of word of mouth is a powerful thing in Bath. Um, and yeah, you don't have to work during term time. It can just be holidays. So like holiday jobs come up there as well, not just term time. Um, but yeah, if you do want to work, you can. And there is plenty of time alongside 
obviously the uni work and then the work that you've got to do outside of uni hours as well. I would say you've got time to work if that is what you need to do. Um, you don't need to worry. You will fit it in and you'll be fine. You will find it. Great. Thanks, Elizabeth. And thanks, Nancy and Hannah, too. Um, Sue, once I've accepted my place but would need to defer a year, could I do that? And how does that work? Yes, basically. So if you've applied for 2021, for example, and then having accepted your place, you then decide, oh, there's some reason or another that you actually would prefer to wait for a year or take a gap year or something or do a bit of work to get some more money. Then all you have to do is just email admissions and we can arrange that for you on UCAS. Great. Thanks, Sue. Uh, Becca, is there a tour of accommodation available? Um, no, there's not, I'm afraid. Um, the accommodation that we secure is with the various landlords and agents um, across Bath. Um, and the contracts that you have are between the student and the landlord. We, we just sort of put the two together so that we can ensure that we've got first year students all housed together. Um, because of that fact, we don't really have... Um, accommodation that we can just take you around to view if we had a halls of residence of course it would be different but um because they are private lettings um it's not possible to do that i'm afraid great thanks becca um hannah how far roughly uh, do you have to travel from your accommodation to um norland as well as um any shops or into the city center um, so yeah, so in first year, um, I lived about a 20 minute walk away from Norland, um, but myself and my housemates became quite lazy because the hill on the way back up was quite large. So we um, did tend to bus or drive it quite regularly, but then in second year, I we decided not to be lazy and we moved just slightly closer. We're now about a 15 minute walk and we walk every day um, there and back. Um, and yeah, it's sponsored by a few hills, typical of Bath, but um, but it's um, it's really really nice, and we have a really lovely chat all all the time on the way. Um, and actually, I all the accommodation is um very very close to the shops and um, everything. And actually, quite a few um people do have their cars in Bath, um, which does help with especially if we go back to talking about jobs around um your studies that helps too um but i think someone did ask actually that i i did drive to norland in my first year but it's a lot easier to walk um there is parking around norland but it's on kind of um like streets and you just kind of rely on the fact that there might be a space but sometimes there isn't and um if you're not very good at parallel parking like I am, it's it's quite stressful before the beginning of a, of a long day. So I would recommend walking or taking public transport if possible. Sue, do you want to add anything there on parking at Norland? Yeah, yeah, just to say that it is officially Norland policy that we discourage you from bringing your cars because there is no parking at, in Norland itself for students. And um, as Hannah said, you can usually find somewhere. And if you live a little bit of a way away, then that's fine. So it's not that you're not allowed to, but we do tend to discourage it. And also a lot of the um, houses don't actually have parking. So it's that's tricky as well. So you'd have to pay for a permit and so on. So just thought I'd better put that in there. <laughs> yeah, I Thanks. really do think, I don't think a car is essential. Um, yeah. Um, and actually it's, it's sometimes is a lot more stress than it's worth. Um, for an added few minutes on your walk to Norland, it's probably easier to walk than drive um, and a lot less stressful. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks both. Um, Sue, when sharing a home, are you allowed people to come and visit? Would they have to stay in different place? Um, and it says in brackets without COVID being around. Well, yeah, well, good. <laughs> Thank you for that addition. Obviously, COVID's made a whole difference in respect to all that sort of thing. Um, basically, it's just up to the household. What we generally suggest is that when you get together in the first few days, you have a little discussion about how you feel about that sort of thing, really. I've got the feeling that generally people are happy with people coming to Spain now and then, but I think it would have to be a group decision and everyone would have to be on board, really. Um, any, do any of you students have an opinion about that? What have you done around that sort of thing? So I live um, in a house of five. Um, 
I'm actually a little bit different because when we moved into second year, we decided that we wanted to live in a mixture of Bath Uni and Norland um, students, which again is another option when you've when you choose your own accommodation. Um, so we had friends at Bath Uni who we thought it would be fun to live with. So we just kind of have a like, just kind of a, a like a policy that like you, we just kind of ask each other on our group chat whenever um, we would like anyone to come over. Um, and everyone is completely fine as long as they know. And obviously it's like a lot different now, but in normal life. Um, and we're all just really respectful of each other in terms of noise um, when we do have our friends over and kind of being sensible when it gets too late. And just, I think it's just being respectful of being in a shared yeah. house with other people is really important. Yes. Thanks, Hannah. Great, thanks to you and thank you Hannah for that. Um, Elizabeth, obviously you've not long moved into your first year accommodation. Um, what kind of essentials did you bring when you first moved in? <laughs> um, okay, so I brought the most stuff. Um, my mother probably laughing. Um, yeah, I brought a car full of stuff. I would say don't bother bringing an iron and an ironing board. And I guarantee my mother's rolling her eyes at that too. Um, because I really thought that was essential, um, given we can't have creases and things like that. But actually, um, you'll probably burn your dress. Um, a hand steamer is probably better. I did bring one of them as well. Um, I definitely recommend one of them hand steamer things. If you look them up, you can get them on Amazon and Tesco. Um, Obviously, um, just your uniform, um, a printer, as crazy as that sounds, I wouldn't have thought that would have been as such, but at the moment with COVID, obviously, I don't know whether that's just my current experience, because I went there last year to know about what the printing at Norland, but um, definitely a printer. Um, and yeah, not too many clothes um you don't need all that much kind of if you don't wear something at home you're not going to wear it when you're here um so just don't don't kind of go crazy don't bring too much because <laughs> at the end of the day if there's something you forgot you can kind of go back and get that or um if you're coming from abroad i know that may be a little bit more difficult um certainly i don't I don't know how I'd have coped with that, but um, yeah, just kind of, you don't need to pack everything except the bathroom sink. Um, kind of just bring the stuff that you know you need and use, um, and then just kind of go from there. If you forget anything, you know, you can go back for it. Um, you can have it forced back to you with uh, COVID being around, you can't go home and just get it right now. But um, yeah, just kind of don't don't worry about what you're packing, just pack what you yeah. use. Thanks, Liz. And I see Nancy's popped her hand up as well. Yeah, hi, I'm sorry, I'm, I am aware of time, but I just wanted to briefly add that, like um, Elizabeth was saying earlier, you know, if you are able to be in contact with your housemates prior to moving in, that's what we did. And we all said, you know, is anyone bringing you know, an extra big pan that you can use, you know, that you might not necessarily have, but it's just being wary. I know some of my, not my housemates, myself, but some of my friends all bought kind of 10 plates, 10 forks, 10 knives, and you really, you really don't need to because, but also not just getting in touch with your future housemates, getting in touch with your landlord, because I'm sure they'll have an inventory um, and what, you, what you're going to have in your house, we did. And so we, we knew that we had an ironing board or even we have two ironing boards between five people. I don't think that's necessary, but it's just things like that. And I, I'm one to overpack, but really check with your housemates and your landlord because you really don't need all the things you probably think you need. So just be communicate, you know, have good communication between the two. Thank you. And um, I've got a couple of questions about uniform, um, Hannah. Um, we've got a question about nose piercings and piercings and also um, makeup. Are you able to talk a bit about the uniform rules at Norland? Yeah, of course. So um, at Norland, obviously, your uniform is a huge, huge part of what you do because it also, not only do you wear it every day, but it represents you and your professionalism and the career that you are pursuing. And so we are 
always, always, always highly encouraged to maintain a really high standard um, in terms of our hair, um, our hair being neatly back in our Norland bun, um, appropriate levels of um, makeup. And I knew, I think this was something I was slightly worried about when I first came to Norland because on a personal level, I had quite bad skin when I first started at Norland in first year. And I was really quite worried about the not being able to wear skin makeup. Um, but actually I realized that when you do come, you can still wear skin makeup, but it's just being sensible about it. And you know, like not penciling in your eyebrows or wearing false lashes or loads of blusher and loads of fake tan. It's just keeping it modest um, and just keeping it professional. Um, and then with the piercings, um, so you're not you're not allowed any facial facial piercings um, and only one pair of small studded earrings. Um, that is just something that has um, is one of the rules at Norland and something that we all follow. Um, and in terms of those piercings, it's just also continuing that, in, like kind of drilling it into you now so that when you do become a Norland nanny, you don't have any for, you know, there's little baby's fingers to pull up or anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, all, it's all for a reason. All of these rules are for a reason. Um, and yeah, it's just, so yeah, it is, makeup is fine, but just very modest. If you come along on Friday to our Speak to Our Students, we have a whole slide about it and we'll chat to you about it and as students, how we feel and that kind of thing. So. Great, thanks Anna and Nancy. Um, Becca, for accommodation after first year, will you still be able to keep where you are living for the future years or would you have to go um, elsewhere? Um, I'm afraid you'd have to go elsewhere. Um, we only, we secure the accommodation for our first years. Um, and we've built up quite a good relationship with a lot of the landlords um, of those properties. So we reuse those properties every year. Um, and then we can ensure that they're of the standard that we want them to be um, and things like that. So at the end of your first year, you will have to move out, I'm afraid. And um, Nancy, just another one about um, uniform. You had a nice little plug there for the uniform um, discussion for the Speak to Our Students um, session. Are there any rules as to what you can wear outside of Roland? Um, as long as you're not displaying any brands um, and you're not showing any signs of Norland, obviously once you're not in your uniform, no one's to tell that you're in Norland. But obviously if you're on a job, a nannying job, you would keep smart, professional and practical because if you're on a nanny job in kind of, you know, heels and a sh you know, a short dress, it's not going to be practical working with children. So just bearing in mind, you know, common sense working with children, but yeah, again, you know it's not really for Norland to say what you do when you're about in town but if you are showing signs if you have a Norland bag if you have a Norland merch obviously you need to uphold the brand but um yeah it's important to just be practical and using your common sense. Becca do you want to add anything there? Yeah I just wanted to make a quick comment about um we will discuss with you about social media um, as well. So although it, when you're not in Norland uniform, it doesn't matter um, necessarily what you're wearing. Um, we're also very aware that you're very accessible um, on social media. And once you have joined the Norland family, um, you're linked with Norland and people can view your social media um, photos and things like that so also bearing that in mind that um, that it's that it's appropriate what um, you know what you're wearing and what you're posting online as well. Great thanks Becca. Uh, Sue is there a limit to the amount of times I can apply? I don't think there are are there Becca? <laughs> No, if you apply and get rejected, then you're very welcome to apply again. And that has certainly happened in Norland's history, for sure. <laughs> I'd say um, we've had a really good success rate with people that reapply um, as well. So don't be, don't be de deterred if, um, you know, if you don't succeed, try, try again. <laughs> yeah, it speaks volumes to us about your tenacity and the fact that you really want to be there. <laughs> Great, thanks. We've got um, a few more questions that we'll try and get through as many as we can before we end. Um, Sue, is there a character limit to, for the additional statement? Oh, no, not at all. I mean, obviously, you know, we want to see you being to the point, not rambling too much. But apart from that, no, no, you're welcome to make it as long as you want. Great, thanks, Sue. Uh, Becca, how many applications do you get a year and how many um, students start? 
It really varies year to year. Um, we aim for 100 students each year um, and applications can be somewhere between 150. Um, some years we've had 200. Um, this year, what with everything going on, I have absolutely no idea. Or all the years, I couldn't <laughs> make a guess. Um, but we aim for 100 students to start each year. Great, thanks, Becca. Uh, Nancy, uh, would we need to bring bedding and pillows? Um, yes, you will need to. Short answer, you need to bring the bedding and pillows. Um, yeah. And <laughs> uh, Sue? Uh yeah, sorry, I was just going to mention this before, actually, when we were talking about what to bring. Basically, you will need to bring bedding, yes, that's right, Nancy, but also there will, however, be basic furnishings in all the houses. So there'll be a bed and there'll be a side bedside table and, you know, yes. a, a table and chairs, hopefully, to eat off and all that sort of thing and sofas. So, and there will also be a kitchen pack. So the basics for the kitchen should also be there as well. And we'll, if you want to sort of email admissions and ask us for a list of the inventory, we can send it to you. And then if it turns out that something's missing from that list in your property, please let us know after you move in and then we'll have a word with the landlord. Great, thanks Sue and Nancy for that one. Um, I'm gonna stay with you Nancy, obviously you've just started your second year. Did you get help um, searching for for your accommodation or did you kind of just do it with the people that you wanted to live with? Yeah so I um, stayed with three of the people I wanted to live with for the first year purely because the other two had found elsewhere like Sue was saying earlier you know as you go through Norland obviously they try and house you the best they can and there was you know no, nothing nasty between the other two we just we went separately and uh, that will happen because you, you are in different lecture groups you meet new people through you know through just general student life um but yeah we found our we found our house with three of us and two others so I'm still with five people um but just kind of two new people but yeah great thanks Nancy uh Becca are you guaranteed a job at the end of studying at Norland um in we have more jobs available than we do Norland graduates However, we can't guarantee um, a job for anybody. It really depends um, on the person. Obviously, we can't go to the interviews for you. Um, and, um, you know, it depends what the, the client would be looking for. But we can guarantee that there'll be more jobs available than there are graduates. So the odds are most definitely in your favour. That's if you decide to join our agency, isn't it? So the Norland agencies, which, again, you don't have to do, really, but yeah. Great, thank you both for that. Um, what else have we got here? We've got one here, Sue. Um, if you have already been offered an unconditional place for 2021, when should I expect to receive the offer pack? Yes, sorry about this. It will be coming soon. Basically, we're still waiting for a few documents to be finalised for the next year. Um, in fact, we were going to email everybody to say that just hold fire for a little while, but I would imagine certainly next month. Would you agree, Becca? Yes, yeah. Um, I would imagine by next month we should be getting those out to people. Great, thank you. Um, just back to Hannah, um, another uniform related one. Um, is it okay if I don't wear makeup? Yeah, yeah, of course. Sorry, I was only um, saying because someone asked about it. Yeah, totally. Um, and actually, I actually don't really wear makeup to college anymore. Um, and I, yeah, I don't. And also on placement, I don't because um, of having the little babies up to you, um, it's just yeah it's not fair on them if they're up against your cheek um to transfer makeup over to them um so yeah i don't and a lot of people don't at all and you kind of save the makeup for like you need the for the evenings so yeah great thank you hannah um becca can we ask for cheaper accommodation yes as i said on the accommodation form um you'll be able to make requests so if you just pop it on there and just say if you could, um, you know, request cheap, the, the cheaper accommodation, then we would certainly take that into consideration. Great. Thank you, Becca. Um, that is all the time we have for questions. So I'm just going to hand back um, to Becca, who will finish the presentation. OK, so just a big thank you um, from me, um, from Sue and, and the three, um, three of our students. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, if you have any further questions or you think of something after, um, you know, we've signed off, then send it in an email. The admissions email is still on the screen. Um, so, yeah, drop anything through to us and uh, we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you. 